we're taught to think of electricity as this technical thing that, you know, powers everything, but it's actually not. It's completely a natural phenomenon. We just harness it. I'm really interested in how sound can really shape our understanding of reality and just experience. Thinking about how we can augment our lives through sound. I used to mess around with audio as a kid. I also had this weird idea of synchronicity. Indicators on a car were really special to me somehow. You know, I could sit and sort of listen to the ticking sound of the indicators while watching the flashlight. I introduced the theremin as a sort of sculptural element in artworks where it would be sort of triggered by moving around on a turntable. I kind of like the chaotic nature of it and uh, using it more like a, um, a thing to have a conversation with rather than control it. And then it's nothing until I let go of it again. I'm interested in waves generally and preoccupied with just different types of waveforms. And they could be light waves or sound waves, which are physical things, but also brain waves and how they relate to sound waves. There are certain frequencies of sound and light that have an effect on our neurology and, and the rest of our physiology or the rest of our body. 40 hertz, which is a very low frequency, usually in the bass range in, in, in music. So if someone is exposed to light and sound at that frequency, it has sort of healing properties. A lot of the work that I'm making at the moment, I program the electricity to be at around 100, well, at 111 hertz. It's a resonant frequency in a lot of ancient chambers across northwestern Europe. They seem to be carved out to have a resonance of 111 hertz. So it's a curious thing as to why they did that. And that's in the human voice range. Obviously, there's a long history of these types of practices with Tibetan singing bowls and chanting and voice activated vibrations. So I'm interested in both the history and the tradition of these types of practices, but also emerging science from these types of practices. I'm really interested in finding out what sound can do on a human level and a physiological level and a neurological level. Looking at sort of tradition of shamanic drumming, that's really fast drumming, you know, and it induces meditative experiences and sometimes hallucinations. It is about listening, but it's also about the sound interacting with the rest of your body. It's about just pure experience. It's very sensual rather than just purely about listening. <laughs>